the homie. All right, guys, what's going on? So uh, today is going to be my deck profile, actually, for my third place finish with Major Shockwave at the Energon Invitation this past weekend at PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So um, deck's been great. As you guys know, I've been playing this deck for a long time since Gen Con, and I've been tweaking it, been building it um, every which way since. I will say it did have a good bit of inspiration from uh, Scott Landis's deck list from a the comic book store tournament that Joe uh, from Wreck and Rule got first place with uh, with the anticipation cards. That same event, Scott Landis uh, top aided with a deck list that's kind of similar to mine. Um, so I took like the I took note of the metal detector, the scrounge, and uh, a couple of other cards. But overall, like I was already playing Red Alert at the event, so that was like um, a lesser version of that because I I only played a couple of Arm Hovercraft or you know like in you know I think one marksmanship. But I added some more of those cards and uh, they definitely helped out a lot. Uh, my meta prediction my meta prediction was right all the way up to top four against the Sphere against a aggro deck like the Double Prime deck or the, it was three wide but then it went into Double Prime and the way my deck was set up I just wasn't able to hang. So I'm gonna take that into account for Orlando uh, probably gonna play shockwave again I'm just gonna tell you now I'll tell you now I'll tell you now I'm probably playing shockwave so prepare for me at least if you don't prepare for anything else prepare for me and put cart now I'm joking a, a lot of people are probably gonna play shockwave so that's one deck to definitely prepare for of course Dan's deck for um, from back to Sigma his uh, the galaxy prime deck is a deck to look out for disarm is gonna be a big card now disarm is gonna be everywhere so I don't even know if prime is gonna be the correct deck to play at that event so we'll actually see um, so despite that, um, yeah, let's jump into the deck profile and show you what I'm working with. So my list this weekend play Raider Sights and Raider Tailwind. Tailwind is actually a late addition. It used to be Firefly, but Tailwind ended up becoming um, maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday night prior to the uh, the weekend coming to the Energon Invitational. He's just great. You know, he has stealth while he's untapped, so they only get really one chance to attack him is like when I send him in. Because after Raider Sights attacks, when Tailwind goes to attack, they invest in attacking him then. If they don't KO him, they're probably not going to go attacking him because they're not going to attack Sights that turn. They're, like I said, they're going to attack uh, Tailwind. And then when Shockwave attack, attacks, depending on who they have to attack, they're probably not going to waste another attack in the Tailwind. And if they do, I don't care because that means Shockwave's still alive and well and have all, has all his uh, you know health. Now, of course, when we stand back up, the way the turn sequences happen then are going to change because if they're still three wide and I'm only two wide now, you know, I have to send Sights in. But it'll be fine because I do have some extra time to set up Shockwave. But uh, he's just great because his... Um, passive effect where if you flip a green icon card so even if you flip a blue green or orange green he gets a plus two or just a single green he gets plus two attack and one defense so you get that ion blaster esque effect so if you flip a bashing shield or a sparring gear or enforcement by times he gets plus three attack off that solo card not even including any of the other cards that you were playing so this is was actually one of the sleepers because it was one of the ones that was talked about the least or um over powertrain because powertrain was like the focus and um you know with optimus and the bat the off-road patrol deck but he and his team is actually very good but yeah so tailwind was just great um he helped get in some solid attacks even when the uh sights died i would sometimes potentially put the sights on him because if i had shockwave with a you know w5 gyro blaster or enemy combat analysis in a mirror match or even a field communicator i wanted to value that extra one attack if my tailwind had a good bit of health on it i would actually still put the uh, Raider uh, weapon on Tailwind, and he would hold his own. So he'd be a 4-8-2 at that point, and I could focus two, and what was cool about the focus two is you're able to find a green card on purpose. So if your first two cards are on green, you just scrap them both, and if you do flip a green card at that point, then he gets more value. So any of your blue greens turn into a double blue, and any of your orange greens turn into a triple orange. So this card is very good, and I definitely expect to see him uh, you know, having more play in the future. He doesn't flip, but the biggest thing about him is your opponent actually doesn't even want to kill uh, sites at all. So the longer that your range guys stay alive, the longer your range package becomes better. And late game, the, the early game is good, but of course mid and late game is very powerful because bots have taken damage at that point. So, um, and I'm just a big fan of the range package. Like I said, I think I'm a bigger fan than, uh, than Scott because I know Scott loves it as well. So while I'm trying to put the range package and everything myself and um, I knew I wanted to gravitate towards this when sites was revealed. And uh, so here we are. And then of course my side deck character is a Raider Caliburst. Now he was 
was there for like Darren escape decks, or he was there for the mirror match, or he was there for Springer decks, he was there for cars with Cliff Jumper and all those type of decks. Now, of course, maybe Darren escape it wasn't that good, but it's all I had. Uh, I did see Dan sided turbo board, so maybe I could look into doing that because you don't really care about being three wide at that point. Being two wide actually helps the fact that they can't load up their characters and do as much if you end up going too wide. So I might actually end up looking into that, take some notes from that. But uh, Caliburst, he didn't do good or bad. It was kind of indifferent, but he was just there as an equalizer to kind of have your opponent chill on all the drawing. I decided against the Jetfire deck as well because on every attack, the Jetfire guy has to, the Jetfire himself has to draw a card. But um, and when he went into Trigger Happy, it was fine because each of his characters taking one damage was decent then. Of course, it's not as strong if they... It's not as strong if they do a... Uh, my computer's acting up. Okay. It's not as strong if they do a... If they keep Aimless in, because they can just keep putting the damage on Aimless. But uh, that's the idea, of course. Sites out for uh, Storm... Or for Storm Cloud, Jesus. For Calibers, and uh, that'll be it for the characters and explanation. Not much to say about Shockwave. I've done, a what, a couple deck profiles on Shockwave at this point. You guys know what the big bad guy does. And uh, very good, very controlling, great card. And uh, so let's jump into the deck list real quick. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's talk about the um, battle cards. Starting with the actions. We have three security checkpoint. Card's very good. Play this card. If you have this and a Gamma Launcher in your hand, you uh, play the Gamma Launcher first, and then if you have Shockwave in bot mode, it's even stronger because maybe you play the checkpoint first, see what they discard, then you can flip Shockwave at that point. Security checkpoint was insane against Ian in top four game one because he went he went second, and when he went second, his first action, his only card that he was able to play that turn he chose to play treasure hunt and he get he got two cards off that treasure hunt so i draw from my turn and my hand was set up to where i could play an upgrade and then when i played treasure or my uh, security checkpoint i had no other upgrades in my hand and i actually took his entire hand except one card and then flipped shockwave back and took his last card that turn was huge and probably won me the game right there because it has slowed him down way too drastically and I think it was a system reboot on top of that. So he had a lone system reboot in his hand. I just stole it from his hand and uh, did very uh, good work. So free security checkpoint. And, of course, those double blue icons are always great. Uh, three, the bigger they are, the bigger they are was great and actually relevant if I were to run into Galaxy Prime because uh, Shockwave is not the biggest, baddest guy on the block anymore. He's 14 stars. Jetfire and Optimus are both uh, 16 and 15 stars, respectively. So that actually would have been relevant there. And, of course, your little guys just helps them to be able to push damage on your opponent's bots and get some pressure on them. Next up, we have three Reclaim. This card is broken in this deck. It is a Decepticon card, so you're able to play it off the top. Playing this off the top, you put an upgrade on top of your deck if you do have an upgrade on Or, excuse me, if you... Uh, you know, you stack a Gamma Launcher or Terrify Resilience or whatever. You can just play that card right off the top. Or you can stack Energy Pack. It's really nice to just get Energy Pack or W5 Gyro Blaster. Put it on top and then flip Shockwave to Alt Mode and just grab that card immediately. Grenade Launcher, Arm Hovercraft, whatever you have you. Next up, we have 3 UFO. This card just says flip-flop your character back from Alt Mode to back to excuse me all mode to bot mode and back to all mode and all it simply does is just take another card from your opponent and then you're able to uh more importantly get whatever card does on top of your deck to your hand next up we have three sabotage armaments there were so many blue players that played this card at three and i'm glad they did this card is insane it's a very good equalizer against orange it's great against shockwave even itself because you know the gamma launcher on shockwave is pretty much a double is a grenade a permanent grenade launcher on him and taking both of those away hurts him a lot in terms of the damage that he deals, especially versus another blue matchup. So it's definitely very relevant. So if you're playing any less than these in your blue deck, I definitely recommend that you play three. Uh, and along with potentially some other secret actions to have your opponent guessing on what you have set, you know, because they could potentially think you have sabotage set and then you really just had hidden fortification or whatever set. And, you know, they may or may not equip their weapon, which, um, you know, saves you another turn, especially if you didn't even have the set and you had something, you know, more valuable uh, for that turn. Next up, we have two Kalyus Leadership. This is a card I cannot get away from, but uh, maybe might cut down to one in the future, but it is a Decepticon card. It does help to heal up your uh, Prime, or your Prime, Jesus. Heal up your Shockwave. I said Prime because I'm thinking about the Prime matchup. But this card is great because even in like the damage race in blue versus blue matchups, when you heal five all of a sudden, um, is you know it's just very strong and then on top of that what's even more important about that is your opponent doesn't want to kill a rate of sights right so since they want to kill it they're going to kind of tiptoe around it because becoming this plus one plus one uh, weapon or excuse me upgrade utility is very strong they actually like i said prevent from trying to kill it so you can just force them force it to be killed by cali's leadership so if he has six damage counters on him you can move five over to him and overkill him and then uh put this on you know either one of your other characters and it's just very good 
Next up, we have two marksmanship. Didn't want to play three for space issues. I'm already playing 42 cards, uh, but marksmanship was uh, very good. And, you know, it's just a plasma burst and be able to hit any of your opponent's characters that are in bot mode. And, of course, as long as sights and tailwind are still alive, it's kind of actually hard to kill. Um, I don't say hard to kill, but tailwind is definitely harder to kill in, in you know, in the deck. And sights, they really don't want to kill. So, again, as long as they're alive, the better the range packages are becoming. Next up, we have a couple of one ofs We have one Smelt and one Scrounge. Scrounge was nice to be able to get whatever off the top of my deck. Play a Field Communicator. Or not Field Communicator. It's like a Field Communicator, but you play a W5 Job Blaster. Arm of a Craft is probably like the number one card I want to flip off the top. Uh, load up two armors. Like load up an armor on one guy. and Or like play Terrify and Resilience off the top. And then like the next card was another armor. So I play Scrounge and get that armor off the top. And just uh, get a lot of value in loading up my guys for the turn. And then, of course, Smelt is good against Pocket Processor. The new upgrade utility that came off the set. And it's, of course, it's bad against, like, Field Communicator and uh, Turbo Booster and Arm Hovercraft, uh, etc. But overall, this card is, like, you can still get rid of Matrix and Leaderships. You can get rid of those early cards. Like I said, a big one was Pocket Processor. You want to get rid of those and uh, try to keep your opponent off of drawing extra cards. Next up, we have one hidden fortification and one backfire. I will say I wish this backfire was another hidden fortification. I just put the entire field, not the entire field, but most of the field on blue. And I think I was right, and I was right at least in my matchups. But playing one, it just would have been better to main deck the second hidden fortification and side deck one of these in a third hidden fortification. I actually only played two hidden fortification between my main and my side, and that was a mistake And um, you know, um, I'm happy about you know how everything went, but I will say if I had another hidden fortification in my deck, maybe even along with this, if I could have found room for it, I uh, definitely would have had a better time versus uh, certain decks. But uh, so just one in one, it could be played off the top. Backfire actually won me a game versus the Shockwave guy after sealed. So in round six, it legit won me a game. He had three, he had two gamma launchers and a field communicator or a pocket processor on his shockwave and he had 14 damage on it though and i actually ended up killing him that turn and it just ended right there so that was pretty cool but most of the time it was usually just a plasma burst or a zap which is still great and it may again it makes your opponent guess on what you potentially have set next up we have one sturdy javelin this helps with the range package of course this is one of the new cards debuted in siege 2 and uh, this card is just great to be able to plasma burst whoever you want. Um, it didn't really come up a whole bunch this weekend. I probably should have just played more. But um, the times that it did come up, it, it still just helps, you know, to help uh, be able to facilitate damage wherever you want. One Energon Axe is a card I wish I actually played two of, but this card is very strong. To be able to, it, the, the biggest reason to play another one of these is because Sabotage Armaments is such a huge card now. Shockwave losing his weapons isn't a good isn't a good deal for you. So once you be a, once you find an Energon Axe and you're able to play this on him, if you still have the field communicator on him, he still has that 12 attack. So now he has 12 with that Pierce too, and it's just still a very strong card. And even also important to be able to put on your sights and your calibers. Now there's six Pierce too, and the longer they don't kill them, excuse me, the longer they don't kill them, the uh, you know more powerful it gets every time it gets an attack in. And then one of my favorite upgrades of all time in this game, Arm Hovercraft. This card, dealing one damage to each character is so strong and it just puts you ahead in a way that um, just makes your opponent worry about more than just taking your opponent's hand. Like now you're worrying about burn and then Shockwave hitting you for 9 or 11 when he's attacking. Just a very good call all around. Great against wide decks. Not so good against um, like, you know, two wide decks like the Optimus Prime deck. Um, I was supposed to side these out, but I had nothing to side these out for. So that's why they stayed in the main deck. And of course, I saw two of them in the one game that I really needed an armor or whatever in that uh, top four game. But it's all good. Still a very good card. Uh, next up, we have three handheld blaster, and uh, of course, this card was just used mainly for defense. I think I used it one time against Aiden in top eight to uh, try to flip an orange or something like that, and I think he was going to steal it out of my hand anyway because he had a shockwave in bot mode, something to that effect, but most of the time, you never want to equip this, and it's just there for its icons. Next up, we have, of course, the best weapon in this deck, the one that you always want to see. A very good starter card. If This is a card that you would love to have on the top of your deck when you're going second, because when you go for your first turn, you won't lose any cards out of your hand. You just flip Shockwave, play this off the top, and it's a very good uh, way to start the game. If they do smelt it or they do vaporize it, they do, they do uh, reprocess, you don't care because it was free. It was off the top of the deck. You still have four cards in hand. When you go on your next turn, you'll have five now and be able to play an action and upgrade. Just overall, very strong card. You're able to have two of these in the same weapon and slot and get that plus two uh plus two and you know four attack and being at 11 base and uh just really swinging in for some nice damage and of course when you play this card you make your opponent scrap a card very strong card i love this weapon 
Next up for our weapons, or that's it for our weapons. I'll take that back. Next up for our armors, we have one sparring gear, one reflex circus, one uh, sturdy armor, and two uh, terrifying resilience. Now, as soon as I saw terrifying resilience and I saw that insignia in the background, I saw the Decepticon symbol, I was very happy that I will have another card to be able to play off Shockwave's effect off the top of the deck. So um, I don't know if I should necessarily be playing two of them. Maybe I only need the one because there were points in time where this card was really good. What, what's more important about this card than just being able to play it off the top is the fact that you are able to anticipate if your opponent has a sabotage armaments. I would actually use my reclaim. It hurt me to do it, but you have to. I would actually use my reclaim to stack terrifying resilience instead. So if I had one gamma launcher on my guy and they... Usually, most of my opponents usually set sabotage armaments to turn that shockwaves attacking, which is smart, of course, which is the way to do it, obviously. And so instead of reclaiming the second gamma launcher like I really wanted to, I would reclaim terrifying resilience and just equalize and play this. So if they did have sabotage, I'm only losing one gamma launcher, and it ended up working out. Uh, the sturdy armor was cool because range, of course, is the most played, uh, you know, uh, faction and not faction, but most played a type right now in the game. This uh, sparring gear was also good. I do wish that this reflex circus was another sparring gear because this card did nothing all weekend. I might have equipped it at one time. And the thing is, Tailwind really only has one attack that ends up uh, getting on him. And if your opponent focuses on Tailwind, you're fine with that. But you really don't want to, you don't need him to have that plus one defense. And blocking against melee really didn't come up because I wasn't playing against decks that, you know, like I said, were really melee. This was kind of like a ranged weekend. It was really, ruled, weekend was ruled by ranged for the most part. And specialists. So... Uh, I really wish this was, was another sparring gear or actually out of my deck at, uh, entirely for another card. And uh, Sights, you really don't want to put this on Sights at all as well either because you kind of want him to die. You want him to soak up maybe an attack or two, but eventually you do want him to be KO. So between Kai's leadership or, you know, potentially having an orange or something on top of your deck and actually leaving it there to give him weaker defense so he can die on purpose, you know, um, or whatever, you actually want your Sights to go. So this is a card I, I won't say regret playing, but I definitely will be taking it out after this weekend. And, uh, but yeah, so overall it was cool for the most part. Like I said, the terrifying resilience maybe can potentially go down to one. And if this car comes out and a reflex circus comes out, it'll be for space for other cars. That'll be the biggest reason why I do that. Otherwise I might actually keep the two terrifying resilience because just being able to play it for off the top for free is always very nice. So we'll see. And then last but not least for the utilities, I played one uh, metal detector, one field communicator and one energy pack. Now the metal detector was great. Whenever, of course, I had Arm Hovercraft or whatever on top of the deck, I just play, off that, play that card off the top for free because I other, otherwise would have just flipped it on my attack. Uh, Field Communicator was always very strong, and I actually missed more of these. This is pretty much like allowing you to play Brainstorm for the turn. I say that because if you play this and have a bigger they are on top of your deck, that doesn't count for your action for the turn. So you play that the bigger they are on one of your characters, and then if you have a bigger they are in your hand, you play that on your character. That's plus four, pierce eight on your character, and that's insane. So, you know, I wasn't playing Leap in the Battle or anything like that, but if I had like Marksmanship or whatever on top, I do wish I played another one of this. So looking back, I think I would have took out the Reflex Circuits for another Field Communicator because, yes, I only had one Specialist, but this card is just very strong to just be able to play additional cards off the top of the deck. Um, if you have, there are situations when I used to play Field Communicator that if you had Shockwave in alt mode, if you had Reclaim, but you couldn't, like if you had Reclaim but didn't want to use the Reclaim on the Decepticon card, you could Reclaim it like a W5 Gyro Blaster or Energy Pack and then play Field Communicator and get that off. Or you can Reclaim Arm Hovercraft more importantly, or uh, not more importantly, but as well, and play the Arm Hovercraft off the top of the Field Communicator. So a lot of applications to this. I do plan on going back up at least to two of this card. But uh, And of course, the Energy Pack was always there for the late game, uh, maybe potentially the early game, but really the late game to increase my Shockwave's health to give them more value as I uh, you know keep smashing these bots. Side deck, I'm gonna run through my side deck real quick. My side deck, I think, was absolute garbage. I ran through with Jamie about a couple of things and um, from Power by Primus, and there were a couple of cards I definitely I wish I would have played over what's in here. But uh, so we have one Bastion Shield. Bastion Shield is a card that's great against other blue decks. This card was great to be able to flip off of an attack with Tailwind. And it was just a nice equalizer. It gives plus one defense on my guys, which is important, of course, in my blue deck. And, um, yeah, you know, just in general, just killing off one of their armors or whatever and getting in with the Shockwave. It shot it because uh, I had a good couple of Shockwave matches where they kept their Terrifying Resilience on or Sparring Gear, and it was really hard to push through damage. But, uh, you know, of course, this card was great against that. A card I don't plan on actually playing again, though, but for what it was worth, it did do work this weekend. And one card that I forgot all about, actually, that Kai Wynn had reminded me of is, because like, I knew I wanted to play this card when I first saw this. Like, eventually, this card is going to be a one-of in a side deck, eventually, somewhere. And um, it 
um, Kai, when Kai won with it, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot all about that card. So I was like, that's an easy addition to add back in the side deck. Uh, Aiden was also on this card as well, so we both were thinking the same thing and had this in our side deck. Uh, plus two, plus two, when you battle against the same uh, character with the same amount of stars, it's very good. Of course, there's only, unfortunately, one 14-star uh, character in the game, Shockwave, so you only really have this literally for the mirror match. But it also goes in the utility slot as well. So if you have this in a utility slot and have a Gamma Launcher, you still have that 11 attack. And you also have four defense when you defend. And if you also have a sparring gear or something, you have tough... Uh, two with four defense, which is very strong, and you're definitely uh, resisting a lot of uh, attacks coming in. Next up, we have uh, one disarm. This is a card that I need to go find a playset of because it's going in so many decks, it's not funny. Jetfire, Mirror Match, Big Optimus is probably the biggest one to put it put it in against. It's actually not that good against Shockwave. I noticed every time I had this against Shockwave. Unless I was going for a hit that was getting them close to being KO'd, I never wanted to play this because I was always going to be bouncing their gamma launchers or whatever. And if you're not getting a like again, if you're not getting a big amount of damage on him, then they just play the gamma launchers and all those again, and you just lose cards. And if they still have the other characters, the issue is they can play a gamma launcher, take a card, then suit them up with the um, you know armor on the next turn, attack with their other guy, and then on the next turn they play the other gamma launcher, and then they're back where they started. All while at that point taking more cards from you. So if you don't have an answer for when Shockwave's finally going in you're in trouble so i really don't like this card against shockwave um maybe it's just the way that i always had it against my opponent i just didn't like it because it was never relevant but uh maybe with other decks it'll definitely be good like maybe optimus versus this deck bouncing my stuff would be good because optimus is coming in with a lot of attack but overall this card is going to be very strong coming up if you don't have you any disarms find you a play set now so uh disarm's great only sided one that's a mistake should have at least sided two i had two i had like I had two in the side, but I actually swapped there for a card I'm going to show you towards the end. Uh, the one hit of Fortification I was talking to you about. This card was great. I don't like three in the main deck because if the de if the format's going heavy blue, you don't need three. I think having two or three, or the having two in the main is fine, and siding a third one versus aggro. Siding a third one versus aggro is something that they can do nothing about. So they can go supercharge, grenade launcher all they want, but if you, especially if you have your armor sticking, or let's say they play bashing shield for their turn. So they play bashing shield and then reckless charge. This hit in fortification almost equalizes their reckless charge, and then we're pretty much going off of our base attack and defense. So this is going to be a very nice equalizer card for those uh, ridiculous reckless, um, you know, bold decks. And seeing how I got hit for 20 twice this weekend, I'm, I don't want to say I'm looking at overheat, but I might have to bring back dampening field or something, or might just have to just deal with it. And this card will potentially just help. Maybe I just need to focus on this card and sabotage armaments to uh, not get hit for 20. So uh, next up, we have two jam signals, a card I wish I did not side deck. It wasn't serious enough to be able to negate your opponent's blue cards. Sabotage armaments was good enough. Did not like this card at all this weekend. Even when I put it in versus the Shockwave matchups, I kept flipping them on defense. And it's that thing when you're flipping blues on defense and oranges on attack annoying I mean, just in general it just wasn't worth playing and yeah it just wasn't worth it so uh maybe i can revisit it another time maybe just tech one and then if i see it every once and again now and then whatever uh next up is another card i regret deciding i overvalued pierce and thought that pierce was going to be the bane of my existence but again with sabotage armaments the thing is you get rid of their laser cutlass you get rid of their energon axe you get rid of whatever for the most of the time so the bigger they are you take those <laughs> we take those we take those every once in a while anyway you're gonna take that attack and you know you're gonna take four or whatever there is no deck that's focused on pierce so much right now that's everywhere that you need to side deck this card once pierce becomes an annoyance and comes a problem you could potentially side deck this this actually will probably take it from a two of and turn into a one of side deck point defense system because point defense system you can find a lot easier between uh uh, reclaim and field communicator or just flipping shockwave to grab it immediately and then playing that on your guys so then your guys aren't taking the pierce uh your natural defense will be fine plus whatever you flip you know if you flip two blues naturally on defense you have four defense and you're you're going to take two less pierce so if they have a laser cutlass you only take pierce one if they have a energon axe you only you take no pierce so things like that so not worth playing this card i wish this was you know another hit of fortification and or something else uh, for the weekend, but it was in there. So like I said, it was in there for like the meta call of being right in terms of like maybe against Octone it would have been okay, but I'm more worried about their direct damage than their pierce. So there's that. Uh, next up for my one of I played uh, one Vaporize. This was a disarm. Should have been another disarm. I didn't have any games where it mattered where this should have been disarm and I lost because it was only a Vaporize, but this will definitely be a disarm after this weekend. You can best believe that. 
And last but not least, one W5 Gyro Blaster. This card is great against the Jetfire deck. This card is, would have been, is great against, uh, you know, aggressive bold decks like that, like Ian's deck. The uh, General Optimus Prowl and Ironhide deck. This card is good against uh, the Mirror Match. So especially if they're playing Flame War, this turns off their tough because they're relying on tough a lot more than I was. So if I could find this card and get it on Shockwave, I can hit for a lot more damage than normal and definitely, hopefully win that damage race against Shockwave. And that's going to do it for the deck profile. There's really not much else to talk about. Um, Shockwave did me, serve me well. He's been my boy and uh, hanging with me for as long as I can remember. All the way back from Gen Con. Like I said before, again, this has been a great year. Uh, can't complain. Can't complain. I wouldn't take it back for anything, how everything is going. And on top of that, there's always room for more accomplishments. We got the uh, PPT Championship Invitational coming up in uh, Orlando. At, at the end of January, I want to say January 24th and 26th. So shout out to George Machado and the uh, PPG crew. And uh, we'll be looking forward to that. Look forward to the uh, the PPT in Las Vegas this weekend. So we got a tournament immediately after the John Invitational. So that would be cool to see what happens there, how many players show up. I expect, like I was talking about in my last video, I expect players like Kevin Allen to be there. Uh, he lives in Cali, but I'm pretty sure he'll be at a swing over there. So that would be cool to see him play. And I'm just excited to see what goes down and uh, how the meta shapes up after, you know, Siege uh, 2 has been introduced and go from there. So, uh... My year is uh, officially over for uh, Transformers. I think we might have a charity event. Um, shout out to Vector Sigma for potentially setting that up at Talk Dead Games towards the end of the year. But besides that, um, my year is uh, for Transformers is uh, over. But looking forward to 2020 and bigger things. Wave 5, hopefully an announcement coming up soon. Looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to meeting more people. So I'm pretty sure I haven't met everybody that I've talked to online yet. So, uh, and speaking of that, you know, beating all the new the people like uh, Wayne Wong. Shout out, special shout out to Wayne Wong and Timothy Teo uh, from Singapore, or excuse me, from London and Singapore, respectively. They came all the way out over here and Aiden is well Aiden coming from Canada and anybody else that's coming from super far away uh they came out and uh it was very cool to finally meet them Wayne Wong I will say shout out again to you bro uh he's getting married this week coming up in uh, New York so congratulations with that he was my most anticipated meetup I like that guy so much he is so cool he's been mad cool so if I ever roll over to London I know who I'm hitting up so uh him and like I said Timothy Teo very cool guy from Singapore uh, I forgot exactly which tournament he won over there but he won a pretty big tournament over there so he's a very good player well known and respected player over there so definitely somebody to uh definitely be on your A game against when you sit across from him at a, at a table and uh, everybody else that I met is way, way too many names to really talk about I definitely want to make sure I get got a specific shout out to them and of course a big shout out to Gotta say, the homie Dan, once again, shout out to you. Congratulations on winning the first Energon Invitational. Um, he didn't beat me, though. <laughs> nah, but uh, it's all love, man. It's all love. Uh, uh, you know, you won our first Energon Invitational. You know, you're our first world champion. Congratulations to you. I am very happy for you. Like I kept telling you, first and last. First and last i get the first one you get the last one it just all works out it comes full circle i wish we would have played again in the finals that would have been sick i don't even know if that's ever actually been done in a card game before the first tournament of the game in the first year of the first tournament of the game in its first year and then the last tournament in the year that would have been sick you know to actually do so um it's unfortunate it didn't work out like that but it's all good i'm pretty sure we'll face each other again in a, a bigger setting we were supposed to play in round nine at the end of john invitation but we just uh drew so you know when we actually ever battle again and it'll always be that upper echelon of a uh, competition because we're both up there, both champions now, and uh, can't be more proud of you. You did a lot of hard work, and uh, you're the man right now. So congratulations to you, uh, and um, I'll be looking forward to uh, facing you again soon and talking to you again soon and talking to everybody else from Back to Sigma and you know everybody in general. Uh, it's been a great year. I keep saying that over and over because that's how uh, serious it is. It's been a great year. So more to come. You guys know what it is. You guys guys have a great day and or a great night. Guys and girls, because I met a couple of girls this weekend, too, that are playing the game. So shout out to all the females that actually come to the game. Maybe I can get my girlfriend back in and have her come in and, you know, bust some bots. So uh, with that, you guys have a great day and or a great night. Whenever you're catching this video, you know what it is. It's S.FTF had not Peace.